Hallelujah. How are you? We thank God. Bow down your head. Let us pray. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for a new heart, a new spirit to worship you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Forgive me a heart, a heart to love you, to live for you, and to honor you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wow. We, we just want to quickly get into this message of today. It's just a little message. It won't be long. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, doubt your doubts. Don't doubt your faith. Say, don't doubt your faith. But rather, doubt your doubts. Because they are unreliable. Your doubts are unreliable. You rather doubt your doubts, not to doubt your faith. Your doubts are un what? unreliable. They are unreliable. Let's read that book of John, chapter 20. John chapter 20, verse 24 up to 29 then also the book of Matthew chapter 14 we will read from verse 22 up to 33 hallelujah okay let's read Matthew in chapter 14 verse 22 immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd after he had dismissed them he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray and later that night he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost. You listen to this? They said, it's a ghost. Mm -hmm. They said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. 28. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Why did you what? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of whom? Huh? The son of God. Hallelujah. Overcoming doubt at its early stage. That's our message title. Overcome doubt at its earliest stage. Hallelujah. Mm. That is to tell you that doubt is something that is more dangerous to our Christian faith. Hallelujah. It is more dangerous to our Christian what? Faith. Jesus overcame doubt at its earliest stage by giving himself fully to God as a living sacrifice. 
to God. He gave himself fully as a living sacrifice to him. What do I mean? I mean, to walk, it was God. To talk, it was God. To eat, it was God. Walking, it was God. Doubt grows when we begin to think that all we do is from our own strength. Listen to me. Doubt grows when we begin to think that to talk is my own strength. To jump is my own strength. When will you begin to believe that God is one behind the strength of talking, walking, jumping, laughing, ha, ha, ha. Because Satan uses doubt as a weapon to hinder many to get closer to God. Because the moment you think that I'm the one who is able to walk, I'm the one who is able to talk, it's my strength, it's my capacity, it's my whatever, it's in my capacity to talk, it's in my capacity to run. You are trying to say to God, I don't rely on your strength to do all this. So, for you to begin to believe him that he can do supernatural things, it will be difficult. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, getting to the board of the message. Jesus, after preaching, feeding the crowd, he went on a mountainside and began to pray for hours and hours. And his disciples, they entered the boat. As they were in the middle of the sea, the Bible says, the boat was being buffeted by the waves. Meaning to say, the waves were hitting harder the boat. As they were busy wrestling to balance the boat, Jesus was now walking towards them. As he was walking towards them, seeing him at a distance, they thought it was a ghost. Who can walk on water? A human being walking on water? No, no. It was their first time to see such. And the, the Bible says they began to scream. Hey, 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 help us, help us, help us. And Jesus said, no, 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 please. You have good share. It is I. Are you listening to this? When Peter saw Jesus walking on water, he said, if it is you, Lord, allow me to come. And Jesus said, come. One, two, three. Wow. He was walking on water. And the Bible says, the moment Peter, the moment he started to look on the other side, doubt began to rise from within. The moment he just looked aside, Doubt began in his heart. Who can walk on water? Such waves and winds moving like this. How can one walk on water? He began to sink. Doubt comes the moment we lose focus towards Jesus. Tell me about doubt comes when we lose focus towards Jesus. The moment you lose focus towards Jesus, doubt comes. This is when Satan capitalizes and begins to raise some certain questions in your mind. How can one do such? Can, can this happen? Is it possible? Peter, by just losing focus on Jesus, doubt strikes his heart. And he began to sink. He began to sink. Help me, help me. Jesus did not help him there and there. He waited a moment to see. Peter was going down, down, bit by bit. Help me, Lord, help me, Lord. He wanted to see genuine willingness to be saved by him. Are you really say what you are or not? Do you confess what you are in the heart or not? Peter, you are sinking. And Peter was saying, the only savior is you. I know I'm a doubting man, but please help me. 
He was thinking, the moment Jesus, Jesus reached out his hand and pulled him out. You of little faith, why did you doubt? What does he mean here? He mean doubt your doubt. Don't doubt your faith. You better doubt your doubt. Don't doubt your what? Because your doubts are unreliable. Faith is reliable in storms, in challenges. In hard times, faith remains reliable. It is a solid ground to stand on in difficult times. Faith becomes a solid ground to stand on in challenges, in difficult times. When our prayers seem not to be answered, faith gives us a solid ground to stand on and begin to trust God believing that he's working out the answer. You better doubt your doubt, but not to doubt your faith, because your faith is reliable. Your doubts are unreliable. There are many things that attract doubts into our lives. When we begin to pay attention to negative confessions, the moment you begin to pay attention to negative confessions of people, what news what you hear on news, what you read on newspaper, oh, doubt comes. Will Jesus save me? My God, this world is coming to an end. Let me tell you this. We are living in perilous times. Perilous times and predictable times. Anything can happen at any time. Who can survive in these perilous times? Only those who have faith in Christ. We are living in a generation full of doubt. Doubt is every way. As I'm talking to you right now, one can be as if he's listening, but yet, deep in his heart, doubt. A doubt will begin to rise from within you. Such things we have to be careful of so that we may not lose our blessing before God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have biblical heroes such as Moses. Moses, after experiencing the mighty move of God in Egypt through ten plagues. And a mighty miracle that has ever happened to divide the Red Sea. Walking on dry ground. In the middle of the wilderness, the children of Israel began to complain about food. We are hungry. You took us out of Egypt. Now, we are hungry. There's drought in the wilderness. Moses, you, Moses, you are going to kill you. Moses, after experiencing such kind of miracle of dividing the Red Sea, he began to doubt God's supply in that very book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 21. He began to doubt God's supply. Will God supply for this wandering Israelite in the wilderness? Will God supply for the wandering Israelites in the wilderness? <laughs> After experiencing a mighty miracle that shook the world, this was a miracle that shook the world. The world was under a shock. How can a human being divide the Red Sea? Which kind of God is this? Who can divide the Red Sea? Wow. Can these people be defeated? Can these people be defeated if they perform such a miracle? This was the question rising from within their enemies. The Ammonites, Hivites, Egyptites, Canaanites. Yes. They have a great God. But... The very man who has been used by God to perform such a miracle is now doubting God's supply of food. Food. That's what has happened to many of us here. Because we have no supply of food today, you doubt God, forgetting that the very house you are in right now, the very apartment you are renting, is the one who has supplied for you. The clothes that you are wearing is the one who provided for you. The water to drink, to bath your body, is the one who is supplied. So why do you doubt him? Because of lack of food. 
Oh my God. You listen to what I'm saying? Moses, a mighty deliverer, had some certain measure of doubt. Are you talking of Gideon? In that book of Judges, chapter 6, from verse 37. After having met an angel of God and gave him a great assignment to be a deliverer of the Israelites, he began to ask God for signs to prove that he was going to use him to deliver Israel. After encountering an angel from above, you are now asking for a sign. Will you use me to deliver them? Are you sure? Are you sure you're going to use me to deliver these people? Are you sure? Wow. After you have encountered an angel from above in its glory and splendor, you are now beginning to ask for a sign. Does it not show that you have some certain measure of what? <laughs> this is what is happening to many of us here. Are you talking about our brother, John the Baptist? Having baptized the Messiah, Jesus Christ himself. He is the one to send people. Go and ask him, is it the Messiah we are waiting for or not? Or should we wait for someone else? Jesus called for people. Come here, you sick people. He delivered this one. He heals this one. He opens the eyes of the blind. The lame walk. He cleans the leper. He raised the dead. He says to his, the disciples of John, go and tell your master what you have seen here. Blessed is he who does not stumble because of me. The very man who baptized the Messiah is the one now to ask, are you the one? What about the miracle that he saw, the vision that he saw? An angel descending in the form of a dove. The voice that spoke, this is my son, whom I love. Hear him. They had some certain measure of doubt, but they did not allow their doubt to move them away from God, but rather to move them closer to God more. It's not a sin to have doubt as long as you seek answers from God. But it's a sin to allow your doubt to move you away from God. It is a sin to allow your doubt to move you away from who? But if you have, you have doubt, at the same time you are seeking answers from God. You are there in his presence, but you are doubting. You are still saying, oh, are you the one? Are you the one we are waiting for? Are you the one we are, like John the Baptist? Oh, yes, I saw an angel. But I, 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 are you sure you are going to use me to deliver these people? Show me a sign. Show me a sign. Okay, show me the second one. Show me the, it's good to doubt as long as you are in the presence of God. Than to doubt and you go away from his presence. That is sin against God. How much doubt do you have? Deal with your doubt at this early stage because doubt is deadly. Very, very deadly. It can destroy your spiritual walk with the Lord. It is a weapon of Satan. Doubt your doubt because your doubts are unreliable. But never you doubt your faith. The heroes of faith we are reading in that book of Hebrews chapter 11. They had some certain measure of doubt. You too, you have your measure of doubt as a Christian, as a believer. But it's good to have doubt at the same time coming to church, seeking answers to God, than to doubt and stay at home. Or you go back to be a palo. You begin to drink alcohol there. Oh, Jesus Christ. Rather have doubt at the same time coming to church, seeking answers to God. Yes. I, 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 it, I, it seems like I don't believe, but mm, oh God. Oh God. Remember the man in that book of Mark chapter 9. Jesus, after transfiguration, coming down, he met these people. They are saying, hey, hey, you have failed to, to deliver him. You have failed to deliver him. You are failures. You are failures. You claim you have, to, you have power, but you, are, you have nothing. Jesus said, quiet. What is happening here? What is going on? The father of the son came out Say, oh, I brought my son to your disciples to cure him from this disease. But they failed to deliver him. They have no power. Just shut up. Who told you they don't have power? They have power. They have power. But they lack necessary faith to release that power. Meaning to say disciples have power. Had power. But doubt was their stumbling block to release the power. No one among us here who can say I have no power. No, no lie. You have that power. But 
your doubt. Your what? I can't hear you. Say my doubt, my enemy. My doubt, my biggest enemy. Right now, you may be listening to this message. You are saying, wow, wow, indeed. This is me. Oh, the man is talking about me. So after the service, what are you going to do? Hallelujah. In that book of John chapter 20 from verse 24, let's read there. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. I will not watch. <laughs> a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you, you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And yet what? And yet have believed. <clears throat> Listen to this. Wow. As if Jesus was there when Thomas was saying these words. He said, unless I dip my finger where the nail marks are and reach out my hand on his side, I will not believe. And when Jesus appeared, he stretched his hand towards Thomas. Put your finger here. Reach out your hand and touch my side. As if Jesus was listening to them when they were talking. He was not there. But the moment he appeared, he said to him, <laughs> Hallelujah. So as a Christian, be mindful of your confessions. As a believer, a child of God, be mindful of what you say because the stones have ears, trees have ears, the walls have ears. They can catch your words. Remember what the Bible says in that book of Proverbs. The birds may catch the words and run with your words and report to what? <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to be very careful as a Christian. Don't just confess anyhow. Don't just talk anyhow. Your words may render you to judgment or acquit you. You can be acquitted by your words or be imprisoned by your own words. Words of doubt the power, ability to render you imprisonment. Not, it may be not physical imprisonment, but spiritual one. One can be living, moving everywhere outside here, but imprisonment. You cannot enjoy your life to its full capacity. You are restricted because of your words. Many of us here, it's not because of witches and wizards this is what we are. No, 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 no. Our words. Tell me about our words. Our words. Ha. Our words have power to render us to judgment or to acquit us. When your situation seems to go deeper and deeper, be careful of skepticism because Satan will use your words. To begin to talk anyhow. The only remedy to cure doubt is to stay closer to believing Christians. The only remedy to cure doubt is to stay closer to believing Christians, prayerful Christians, those who feed on faith more than on doubt. That is the only remedy to cure doubt. Because doubt is a disease. Tell me about doubt. 
is a disease. Faith is a solid ground to stand on in difficult times. When your prayers seem not to be answered, don't doubt your faith, but doubt your doubts because they are unreliable. A Satan used doubt to overthrow many Christians, many believers. Because we have not received your prayer for 10 years, I need this, I need this. For 10 years, God has put you on hold. You begin to doubt. Why do you doubt when you are asking for phone? For 10 years, God has not provided the phone. Why do you begin to doubt him when he has supplied the, the shoe? Remember one day you prayed for a shoe. He gave you the shoe. You were praying for a trouser. He gave you the trouser. You prayed for a, a shirt. He gave you the shirt. Now you are praying for a phone. You have not received a phone. So why do you begin to doubt God? Because he put you on hold. Because he said, nah, I will not answer the phone now. He knows if I give you a phone, it may be the phone, may be the one to tempt you. And you are, I'm going to lose you. And up until you mature, then I'll give you the phone. He knows. Let me tell you something. Whatever we need here, God will check us spiritually. Do we qualify now to have this or not? Don't tread your spiritual life with sin. Don't tread your spiritual life with what? Take care of your heart. Guide your heart. Don't ever tread your joy, your freedom with sin. Because for you to get that freedom, that joy, you know what it took you. Thank you. May God bless his word in your life.